Count on. Okay, we are so glad to be able to welcome our guests back at least to Channel 3, if not inside the studio proper. So our next guest said she was game to come over today and hang out on the porch with us. Nancy Adiano has absolutely fabulous interior, and that's what she promises to provide you at your home. Great to see you again. Thank you for having me, Julie. So I am fascinated by what you do, and I think a lot of people watching will be because I at first thought you were going to be an interior decorator. You are a female contractor. I am a female contractor and I'm extremely handy. That is so awesome. So did you, was this one of those situations where it was the uh, necessity is the mother of all invention? Did you need to know how to do things and one thing led to another? I was raised in the painting industry. Uh, they put a paintbrush in my hand when I was eight and it just went from there. And really this company was born out of the need to provide contracting services with class and integrity. So it's not some of the work you will do yourself. That's correct. But you've kind of built up an arsenal of people who you know you can trust. And so if the job is a little bit bigger than you can tackle or if you don't have time for it, you can make good recommendations for people. Is that kind of it? Absolutely. Some of that I do myself. Um, some of it I subcontract. It really depends upon the project. It depends upon the scope and I have different teams who specialize in different areas. Now you actually have, you told me you've built two houses on your own. Yes. That's not what you're doing with the business though, right? It's $25,000 or less of a project? That's correct, but I will go back and fix mistakes that your builder made. Oh, <laughs> but I'm bum. <laughs> so you provided some pictures. I'm, I'm, they're beautiful. I don't quite know where to start. So let's start, um, Let's start first with the, the little cottage, the okay. bungalow that you helped someone redo. You were telling me that the, the furnishings and all is her handiwork, but the cleanliness, the absolute smooth, crisp, up-to-date fixtures in it, that's all your work. Yes, that project was very, it was very fun to do. Um, we. Well, you had like, you had, you were telling me about different, uh, different mediums, like there was a, a sunroom, I think you said, and the, the paint and the wood was real rough and you wanted to make it smooth again because she was doing white on white basically in the house. That's right. This was a 1940s bungalow, which means a lot of character, which also means a lot of flaws. And there were places where someone painted over wallpaper without priming. You can paint over wallpaper, but you have to do it right. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it properly, and so the wallpaper was wrinkled and left some texture on the walls. We went through and smoothed those, um, made them look nice and flat again. Um, all the chips in the door frames we repaired. We didn't want to make it look new, but we wanted to make it look fresh and clean. We also wanted to give it a an expansive feeling. With it being a smaller bungalow, mm -hmm. the homeowner chose to go with tone on tone colors. So the same color, same on the ceiling, walls and trim. I love it. I think it turned out very clean, very smart, and it looks so great with her furnishings. It's modern, mm -hmm. but it's still warm. Right, I love it. Okay, so then you also love to find something that would otherwise be discarded and give it a new life. There's what's now a desk that you said was your grandmother's vanity? It was my great-grandmother's vanity. Wow. Yes, she's from New Orleans, and so that was my inspiration for the color scheme for the vanity. Um, that thing went through so many hard years. There were initials from all the grandchildren carved into it <laughs> and layer upon layer of cracks, nasty varnish. It took a little work, but I think it came through. Okay, so um, in that particular case, what you did, I guess, was you stripped it, right? To get all the varnish and veneer I off? I did. First, um, I, was, I was a little rough with it, actually, because I knew I was going to have to manhandle this one with all those coats of varnish. So first I took a putty knife or uh, rather a five-in-one, and I scraped off all those layers of varnish. Then I went back and sanded it. I filled in all the carvings and deep scratches, gave it another sand, then I primed it and painted it. Okay, so then you've got a bathroom shot, and this one's interesting to me, not so much because of the design, but because I think it speaks to something a lot of people probably have run into. They had mixed uh, materials, if you will. They had some real smooth wood and then some rougher wood. A lot of us would just throw our hands up and say, I don't know what to do with it. You did. We did. Um, so I came into this bathroom and the, the problem with it was that 
the materials were not the same. So there was one type of wood for the cabinetry, a different type of very sleek modern wood for the cabinets on the upper cabinets. And then the shelving in between was natural wood. It had a lot of texture, um, a lot of wood grain in it. Mm -hmm. So we went through and removed the fixtures, the uh, pulls and handles from the cabinetry, made sure those holes were filled nice and smooth. You will never see that they're there. Um, that gave it a nice, clean, modern look. And then on the top where the wood grain was, we stripped that down, filled in the wood grain with wood filler, sanded it, primed it, and painted it. Everything has a glossy, modern, smooth it's beautiful. finish. Beautiful. It really brightened the bathroom. Okay, so one thing that Nancy does too, though, is she's big on teaching you how to do things as well. That's right. So I had asked you if people can kind of maybe um, work a little bit on the project on their own to help learn a little bit as they go and maybe save a little money. You said sure, depending on the job. But you know, because you have five children, mm. <laughs> that kids can be rough on a house. Mm -hmm. So for people who have dings in their walls from those doors getting slammed open, what do you want to share with people this morning? There is something that's so great on the market right now, and, and really this is the first time that I've used it. You mentioned teaching. I also teach painting classes for Women in Repair Zone as well. It's called Painting Like a Pro, so look into Women in Repair Zone. But my Sherwin-Williams rep, I have an amazing Sherwin-Williams rep, Katie Davis, love her, <laughs> and she told me about a year ago about these new patches that 3M designed, and they're specifically made for door knot holes and smaller holes in your walls. So if you've ever used a mess patch, you know that when you put that mesh on the wall, it doesn't matter how careful you are, it doesn't matter how well you sand it, you're going to see that texture. Yep. You're either going to see a rise um, in in the um, depth of the, I messed that. Well, up. that no, that's okay though. There's a place there where you right. can just you can tell you it's no longer perfect. You always see that it's higher than the area around it. Right. So 3M came up with a product that tapes to the back side of your drywall. It forms basically a scaffolding for your material, your mud. So you stick it to the inside of the back of the wall fill it with mud, let it dry, sand it, go back and touch it one more time and it's perfect. So I have been out here totally taking advantage of her <laughs> for about half an hour because it's like running into somebody at a dinner party or something and you kind of follow them with your cocktails <laughs> everywhere you go because you don't want to lose sight of the knowledge that she has. And I would say things to you like, okay, so if I had you come to my house and said, here's a problem corner and I don't know what to do with it, you'll have five ideas in your head at once, right? Absolutely. So you don't have to have the idea in mind as the client, they can brainstorm with you and find the answer they're looking for. There's a lot of pressure in design and one of the things I want to do is really take that pressure off the homeowner. And so my goal is to spend a little time with you, get to know what makes you smile. I would ask you to pick your favorite items from your room. If you could only leave this room with three things, what would those three things be? Mm -hmm. And then I want to really analyze what you love about them. I want to whip that into a plan for your special space and, and really make it unique to you. There's a lot of heartless flips, I think, yeah. especially in Chattanooga. The market has a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, they're just churning them out. So if you found yourself in one of those heartless flips and you want your home to feel like you, I can really help you with that. Okay, here's how you're going to do it. It's absolutely fabulous interior. The number there on your screen, her name is Nancy Adiano. And is there a Facebook page as well? There is. And it's fa absolutely, absolutely fabulous. fabulous interior. On Facebook, your house can be your castle. We're back with more in just a minute. You were so fun. Thank you. That was great. Thanks. I'm always shocked at how riveted I can be talking about underwear. Tis the season to rock spring.